Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and you join me here once again in Airport CEO overlooking the perfection that is Ajaxima Airport here in the UK. Well, when I say perfection, I mean, well, it works. There are several things, however, that I've discovered are not perfect. You may recall, I think I mentioned this, so you may recall in the last episode, I think I noted that we're every now and then I would get one of those little red icons over a member of staff saying they can't get where they want to go. And they seem to be pointing over here, by and large, down into our baggage security check. And I've done a bit more looking at that, and I think I've discovered what's going on. Uh, first off, just to highlight that we've, we have sort of looked at these before. Uh, there is an employee, or well, new product has arrived. What's that? Did I buy something off camera? What was that? Uh, it's oh, wh why is that jittering then? Oh dear me! Uh, fluid, you're um, you're you're a supply truck. You're not mine as such. Ah, uh, this is mine. What are you? A de-icing truck. Oh, I think I might have bought two actually of those. Sorry, we'll get back to what I wanted to say in a moment. <laughs> But I, again, I was just doing a little bit more research into uh, in, into how the game works. Uh, push back, push back. Oh, there you are. I, yes, I did. I purchased another de-icing truck because it seemed to make... There were comments on the forum saying that you ought to have uh, more than one de-icing truck per stand. We shall see how that works. Um, oh, and another thing before... I will get back to what I was talking about, the security people, in a moment. <laughs> I mentioned in the last episode when we when we got the de-icing is okay so what season is it and I would have thought it might be down here somewhere you got the weather data it says oh it's nice and clear which is fine but I'm not quite sure what the effect of uh, humidity and pressure is so is that useful information let me know if you know if it is in any sense useful no what i didn't spot when i was wandering around down the bottom here is that this little icon here is the season icon it doesn't actually tell you what season it is you're supposed to guess now i'm looking at that and i think there's kind of a bright sunny kind of symbol so i'm think thinking this is summer and i have played on a little bit uh, from this point and it does turn into autumn and you get a sort of orange leaf kind of symbol which I think is the symbol for autumn so I think you are told but it's nowhere near explicit enough for me I like things to be told <laughs> I'm a simple-minded player anyway what I was talking about yeah if we go into this uh, analysis so I want a uh, security path officer so if I go say from the staff room up here that's there and I want to go down here to the baggage control area it gives me a failure in that secure zone uh, but there is a secure a member of staff already down here a security member of staff down here they do have well they've run out of <laughs> they have a very high toilet need and they are very very tired uh, so i'm guessing they've been there since that desk was opened i'm not sure how they got there but i have worked out what the problem is it's not that it's a secure area because it is a secure area as that is there but there's no official way in and out it seems that even for your staff you do need to actually give them a security desk entrance and also a security exit so this little bit of security zoning here isn't sufficient so what I want to do is fix that so if we look at secure zone and if I make all this secure in fact that's good I'll take you away now we do need a security exit. You're fairly... Oh, I need you to go somewhere that isn't secure. Okay. <laughs> Alright, we need to take security off. There, I think. If we make you like that, will that work? Because we're going to need a security desk so they can get in. Uh, rotate that round like so uh, oh okay this right I'm going to have to delete that wall aren't I I'm afraid uh, that's walls isn't it so let's uh, take you away 
Actually, that, that's, that's kind of... Actually, though, what we'll do is we'll take it away from there. Okay. And we'll put our security entrance in there, but we can put in our security exit. Yeah, security exit in here. And I think you need to be a bit like that. Yeah, so you can go back out to the staff area. That's fine. Okay, once that wall's been taken down, we can put in a security entrance, which is good. Uh, I also wanted to do the uh, the self-service check-in desks and stuff, which I, I researched a little while ago, but never actually implemented uh, in, the, in this game. It, in the video recordings I'm doing anyway. Uh, we should make that... What's that? That's a floor tile, isn't it? Is that flooring? Are you that sort of floor? Yes, you are. Well done. I spotted it. There we go. Now we want a security check, which is a small one. Oh, yes, you will do, I think. There we go. So that should then allow my people to come in and out from there. And I mean... <laughs> Ordinary people don't seem to need walls to stop going in and out of places. Uh, so if I say an area is secure, then passengers simply won't go in there. That That's fine. Okay, so once we've got that done, that's good. Uh, requires additional staff to operate. Uh, I don't really care about that, to be honest. Uh, so I'm short of a member of staff. Oh. A janitor. <laughs> uh, that's not quite what I was expecting to see there, but that's fine. Can they actually get there? Okay, so let's do that pathway test thing again. So path for security officers. Say from our staff room over there into this secure zone here. They can do it. They can go through the security entrance. So presumably then, uh, if we say from there, Anywhere, really, I suppose. Can they get down here? N no. What do you mean, no? Okay, so they can get down there. Aren't we still going to have an issue? Do I need to make this whole thing secure? I suppose I might do. Don't Yes, because that's... Yeah, because that's a boundary point, isn't it? That's the problem there. Yeah, so if I make this all part of Secure Zone 2, as it's decided to call it. Uh, can I do that? Uh, doesn't like going over walls, does it? Is it? Oh, I think that is Secure Zone, isn't it? Oh, that's just... Ah, uh, okay, right, yes, the... the yeah, that is Secure Zone. That's good. Yes, the, the orange hashing is the fact that's a staff-only area. In fact, do I need that? Can I take that off? Yes, so that is all secure zone 2 now. Oh, now what's it complaining about? <laughs> May not be usable for pass. I don't want passengers to use it. That's the whole point. It's in a staff area. <sighs> uh, is it in a staff area? It is. Um, okay, if I take staff off there then. So it's just secure zone. Oh, I need to control that, don't I? There you go. Oh, and it works now. Okay, right. Good. Makes life more complicated. We've got a member of staff there now. And I just want to check that we can do that path test. So we'll take a member of security from there. Can you get down here? Yes, you can. Excellent. Yes, you go through the security gate, and uh, yes, well, that's all resolved, isn't it? Hmm. Yes, interesting. It took me a while to, to figure that out. Okay, what are we doing? Uh, oh, a couple of other things I want to add to this, uh, to tell you here, is I have started adding some mods to the game. I have added in a few stickers which are sort of airport signs. So if we say, ooh, a public bus, we can put this uh, down here, for example. 
you can't make it too large okay so that's public bus yeah they, they just sort of sit on the ground they don't have that kind of 3d look of real signs which I think we sort of had a bit in in sim airport so it's a bit of a shame but I mean it's better than nothing basically isn't it so you can go there all right and what other stickers have we got uh, food and beverages, information, food courts. Uh, there's one for international, isn't there? In regional flights, Terminal 3, toilets. Yeah, there are definitely toilets. There are toilets here. Yeah, that looks a bit rubbish, doesn't it? Oh, no. It still doesn't look terribly clever, but hey-ho. It's something at least. To add a little extra customization to my airport. Now, something else I discovered as well. Is that a Tupolev? It probably is, isn't it? Yes, a Tupolev. Uh, yes, I was talking about mods. So I've added, yes, some stickers. I've also added in some airline mods. Uh, which includes uh, filtering by airlines. Lufthansa Vintage. Which allows me to fly some... Vintage aircraft in Lufthansa, in vintage Lufthansa livery. I didn't want to close that. I wanted to stay in there. Uh, British Airways. Yeah. Uh, actually, don't get terribly exciting planes for that. There is one for Concorde as well, which I'm not. I can't remember if I if, I, if I've enabled it or not. And also the United Airlines. Why United Airlines? Uh, because it's an American. One of the few American airlines I've actually flown on back in the day. So that gives us lots. Uh, we'll I consider signing those contracts uh, in a in a little bit of time at some point soonish. This self service are you being used? You're not scheduled, so I could take you away, couldn't I? So if I close you down, just demolish you, can I? There you go. Let's get you out of the way, and then we can put a couple of self service desks in. I'd also like drop-off baggage as well, which can I actually... We could. Now the trouble is everything goes... Mm, there's only one port on this. We could have another baggage hub, couldn't we? What are these things called? It doesn't tell me what they're called, but they're kind of a baggage hub thing, aren't they? Right, so that's gone. Let's actually consider that. Could I put conveyor belt down here to go into baggage let's get into planning mode shall we there you go we're in planning mode so we want a conveyor belt a little conveyor belt there you go and if you're okay you need if I want to put you there you'll be hmm. actually that might work it's on the edge of the staff room. Does that matter? I'm not sure it does. But, no, we're going to need a down, aren't we? That's the thing. Escalator down. Whoops. Right, would that work there, though? I'm not sure it would. So, if we go down again... What we could do is have our down, if I rotate that, going that way and then feed in there I think that might work that might work, yeah, so yeah, you do need to be about there that's cool, right, so let's place down some conveyor belt one other thing, uh, it appeared in an update at the end of July, I think. And I don't think I mentioned it here at the time. Don't go up, go down. Is that uh, in a recent update to, the in a update to the game, sometime in July, they actually made a change that you didn't need to research multi-level operations before running a conveyor belt downstairs. Uh, because if you remember the, sh the tutorial we were following said that uh, you can now do conveyor belts and all the examples of conveyor belts it gave you were going underground but you couldn't do that because you needed more research to do it 
uh, but they've now taken that requirement off. So you can actually build, I believe, I've not tried it to be honest, I think you can build now uh, conveyor belts going down or into different levels without having done the multi-level research. So that makes life a whole lot easier for a whole lot of people, me included. Uh, right, so we want you going there. Right, so what we want here is check-in desks. I want self-service. A self-check-in baggage drop. That's it. Okay, so you would go there. And you do need, because I have played around with these off-camera, you do need actually a check-in desk as well, a self-service check-in desk, uh, to go with the baggage drop-off. drop, drop off. So if we put you there, I suppose. That kind of makes sense, I think. Okay, let's build that. Let's see what... Uh, what the team make of that? Uh, we need to build everything that's planned. Yep, build that. And build that. Good. Well, I'm not paying attention to my monies. Largely because I think we are generally quite profitable at the moment. Despite the fact there's a big red number there. That's fine. And we could do another self-checking desk as well, can't we? Uh, let's do that. A self-check-in. put you there. We don't have much room for queues, but that's okay. Actually, no. Let, what I'm going to do... Oh, I've completed the research into fuel tanks. That's You see, it's told me there. I've done that research. I'm sure in the last episode it didn't tell me. Or maybe I just didn't see it because I wasn't paying attention. Yep, you know how these things go. Can I move you? Well, I can. I want to move you back a bit, actually. So we've got a little bit more room for queues to be put in. Okay, let's get the team building all that. Oh, one other thing I learned as well. <laughs> I've been, I've been doing, but, yeah, I've, been, I've just been doing a little bit more research onto all the things we can do here. Is that on large stands, you can actually enable them to uh, to to actually allow medium aircraft as well. Allow medium aircraft to use this object. There you go. So you can put uh, medium aircraft on large stands. I think I don't think I said that in the last episode. If I did, then I do apologise. But you can't do the same thing. I think you, know, you can't do it on medium stands to allow small aircraft, which is rather annoying, to be honest. But there you go. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the day. Right, so you need to be okay. What's what's your problem? In me, I don't want to. Ah. Okay, so we need to. Can I not activate you? Ah, oh, there you go. Activate. Okay, and connect it to a baggage bay, which will be our one and only baggage bay over there. What do you mean you can't find a a path? There's a path there. You can see it. Oh no, it seems to be okay. Right. Uh, oh, they're active. So I'm not sure what I was complaining about, about not having a nearby baggage drop. Mm, okay, do these things have queues? Doesn't seem like they do. Yeah, you're fine. Oh yes, your baggage drop for those two. Yes, it's got the flights on. Okay, I'm, I'm clicking as much as I can, and I'm getting no response from these objects. So maybe the self-service, the self-check-in, isn't tied to any particular flights. It's all tied to the bag drop. And it works! Well, that's good, isn't it? I'm very happy about that. <laughs> that should make passengers' life a whole lot easier. Look at this. We're already at £116,000. We were less than 100000 
just a few hours ago. So I'm very happy with that. How are we doing in terms of staff? That's good. Vehicles, are all, all everything's green. And we can now place fuel tanks. Okay, for Avgas or Jet A1, they cost 10 grand. That's not a lot, is it? Uh, we're too far from the fuel depot. Where is the fuel depot? Are you there? Does does not uh, uh, fuel does not support attachable. Oh, do you not? Oh, are there different types of fuel depot then? Oh, that's interesting. Do you need a mu medium fuel depot to support attached tanks? Oh. Again, it'd be nice if it um, said something to help you understand that, but it doesn't want to do that, apparently. Uh, do I attach you to a road? No, it needs to be close to the, to the fuel depot, but not one of those. Well, I'm not spending 37-odd grand on another fuel depot, because that one seems to be working quite fine, thank you very much. Oh, another thing I learnt. <laughs> I think this whole episode is basically, basically going to be me telling you about all the fun facts I've learnt. Uh, yes, on these remote... Oh, autumn is rolling in. We've still got a way to go before winter turns up. You see the little icon down there for the season? has changed to a little orange leafy kind of thing. I assume it will look like a snowflake, which hopefully is different enough to a sun symbol, <laughs> so that I can tell. Now, one other little thing I learnt is on these remote stands, let's take this one, which is the one that gets most traffic, I think, is you can set not just a, a bus stop for passengers, but you can set separate bus stops for arriving and departing passengers. So you've got arrival only bus shuttle stop. So if I, actually what I want to do is I was gonna build this one. Because we've got this one here, which I've had sat there for a little while and not been able to find a repurpose for. So let's build you and then I'll add you as an arrival only. Which means that arriving passengers can either transit directly into the international lounge, which is what we've got over here, or they can go straight through that uh, door there and go through a ba through to baggage claim, which would be nice for them, wouldn't it? Okay, so we'll take you and we'll set you to a separate arrival. Can't arrival only while ha uh, <laughs> because of the, I can't change the configuration of that stand whilst a flight waiting. Right, can, can I set you to? Okay, wait for that plane to get departed. Okay, right, stop. Can I do you now? Arrival connection to there that's it okay so it's connected to this uh, bus stand now that's the oh it's connected here that's right for departing passengers this bus stand here and this one is for arriving passengers actually can I put oh you've now got a plane on you oh it's oh this is our early morning comet love these planes I wonder if I can put that to the same bus stop for arriving passengers. Interesting. Oh, hang on. Uh, this operation's gone out of business. Bother. What would be good, in actually, would be this uh, little outfit here, Fly Go, is doing awesome business. I mean, already today, they've got over 200, and they only needed 125 people to purchase something. Uh, so they're doing awesome business, but these bigger operations here on the other side <laughs> in the departure areas just don't do any business. But I just wonder, would it, is it possible? Can I move? Oh, I've clicked on something. I don't want to click. I want to click on the room itself. You can't really. Is it X for rooms? It is. Yeah, it'd be nice if I could move that contract to somewhere else. <laughs> in the hope that it would be profitable in that other place as well. Okay, so what contracts do we have available for this space here? We have bottle. Uh, sales. Ooh. 
They only require 95, do they? That's a lot better. Power, 205. Paper News, 265. Belong, you do 95. You're 810 per hour. Ooh, bottle, bottle to go, or whatever. Yeah. Let's sign you up. I'll sign you. That's good. Uh, what I could also do is on that decoration for the stickers, you may have noticed uh, there are stickers for each of my franchise outlets or, or each of my airlines, everyone I've signed a contract with, basically. So I could put the bottle to go sign here, right in the middle of their space. That's good, isn't it? Uh, I could put every, them everywhere else as well that I remembered where who they were. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're still waiting to go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Are you a two player or are you a Concord? You're a Concord! Oh, that's, that's good. Beautiful aircraft. I actually went to visit the Concord exhibition with a real live. Well, it's, it's a kind of a dead Concord, really. It doesn't go anywhere. Well, it, it, it goes in and out the hangar at, um, at Filton. British Aerospace, that's what it's called, isn't it? I went to visit it a couple of years ago. And it is an awesome aircraft. I mean, it's incredibly small and compact and tiny inside. It's amazing that people, <laughs> the, the, the pilots in particular, the crew, could actually manage in such a confined space. But it is an absolutely beautiful aircraft. It is, I mean, it, it brought, to be honest, it did bring a tear to my eye. It's such a beautiful aircraft and, and an incredible feat of engineering. It's just a shame that it was um, it, it was born too early, I think, wasn't it? Before people, and too too late in a sense, because these days you couldn't fly it because it'd be unsustainable. It'd be environmentally entirely unsound. I mean, it was then, but these days we take notice of those things. Right, this stand here, can I set you arrival only? Can I put you to, oh, I can. So I can send people to that stand. Now what will happen if we got planes arriving on both these stands and they want their buses to take their passengers there? What chaos will that cause? I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll find out at some point I'm sure. Uh, so what are we doing here? Wait, oh, are you about to be pushed off? Do you know what? This, this set, I'm going to pause there for a second. What have we done today? Uh, we have I think, worked out how to get new security staff manning this uh, desk here. Oh, someone has come in and taken over from whoever it was before. That's good. <laughs> so people do get a rest. Uh, we've put in some self-service down here. Right, we're waiting. Ah, so are you not boarded yet? Uh, you're departing at 12. Oh, no, you've got another couple of hours. Right, so I, I need to keep on waffling for two hours then, don't I? <laughs> Ooh. Buses. Right, so your arriving passengers are going... Oh, you're not. Oh, actually, I want that to enter at the top. There you go. Rather than the bottom. That makes more sense. Oh, you're going away. All right, okay, so these arriving passengers... Actually, I did try this off camera, and there was a little issue with the point of entry for the bus onto that bus stand. Let's see how it works. Oh, the Concorde is boarding. Uh, we will finish off with the Concorde taking flight. Yeah, why did you do that? Why did you do that? The other buses, I'm sure, do go into their stands in the appropriate fashion. Yeah, I don't know. I may play with that again. All right, so yes, that's it. Uh, we've done not a, not a great deal. We've, we've tidied up a few bits, I think. So we've got some new check-ins and baggage uh, dropping areas. We have sorted out security. We've got stickers. Uh, we haven't got any new contracts. Actually, before, for flights for the, with these new companies, what I'm thinking is we might get rid of one of our existing airlines. Um, yeah. We may well do that in the next episode, or I may. Can I support another stand? I'm not sure. 
Uh, yeah, we will have to wait and see. But yeah, so we've done a little bit of tinkering around. Uh, we've, we've got some new features to our airport. We have got a new aircraft. I need to follow you. There you go. Uh, there you go. For, I am following you. I turn the interface off and we'll follow you out onto the runway. So yeah, a little bit of tinkering. That's, that's what I'm looking to say uh, in this episode. But nonetheless, hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, it'd be great to hear from you. A little bit of a like would be lovely. Even better, though, if you've got anything to say, any hints, tips, comments, recommendations for mods. That's getting a bit loud now. Uh, yes, do let me know. Just drop it out into the comments box below. It would be awesome to hear from you. Other than that, of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you could do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play series. But from me, Ajax Post, here in Airport CEO. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.